he just wants to straight up murder his son. <laughs> yeah, I just want to straight up murder him. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jake and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's best endings, at least in my opinion. Stephen King definitely has a bad reputation for having terrible endings to his stories. And if you've seen my previous video where I talk about his worst endings, you know that this has some merit to it. But while I made that video and I was coming up with what I was going to talk about, it was actually difficult to find Stephen King books with terrible endings. A lot of his endings are just you know, they're fine or they're mediocre. It's hard to find terrible endings. And for me, especially when I went and looked at some of his older books, some of the books that he wrote in the 70s and 80s, he actually has terrific endings. And it's a lot easier to find good endings from him. And I do find it interesting that a lot of the books that I have to talk about here are shorter books, while some of the books that I talked about in my worst Stephen King endings videos a lot of those books were a lot longer. Also, a lot of the books that I have to talk about here that have good endings, at least in my opinion, are some of his most well-known classic books, which makes sense, right? But anyway, enough of the preamble. Let's jump right into it. Also, obvious spoiler warning, I'm going to be talking about the endings of these books. So hard spoiler warnings for the endings to all of these books. If you have not read these books, if you have not finished these books, don't watch this, or at least don't watch that section of the video. And these aren't ranked in any way. There are 10 of these, but I'm not gonna like rank them. I'm just gonna talk about all of them in whatever kind of order I want. The first one that I'll mention just right off the back is The Dark Tower, the very ending to this book and the very ending to this series, the concluding chapter of the book, I find really good. Some people either really love it or they're really frustrated with it. But for me, I love it. And obviously for anyone who hasn't finished the series yet, I'll give them plenty of time to click away because I'm going to quickly mention what the ending is and I don't want to spoil anyone. I love the ending to the series and how it basically implies that he's been on this journey several and several and several times before. It has a very cyclical nature to it. And I love how the very last line of the book is the very first line in The Gunslinger. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. So for a lot of King fans, it's either an ending they're going to love and they're going to want to immediately go back and read the series, especially The Gunslinger, which The Gunslinger, because of this book and because of the whole series, is a perfect book upon a reread because you love it even more the second time. Or you're going to hate the ending and you're going to feel like it's a cop out and you're like, so none of this mattered because he's just going to keep doing it over and over again, whatever. But for me, I thought it was just brilliant and I loved it. And that's why I'm including it here. This next book might be weird for people because it's not necessarily a great Stephen King book. It's not even necessarily one of my all-time favorite Stephen King books, but I love the ending nonetheless, and that would be The Running Man. It's one of the rare Stephen King books where the characters aren't great, but it's still a fun read because the plot and what happens in this book is pretty decent. And the very ending of the book, the last chapter, which is basically just like a page and a half, is terrific. It's basically a dystopian novel where this guy gets to be a part of this game show where if he stays alive for 30 days after people come to kill him, he wins a large sum of money. And the very ending of the book, he basically gets control of this plane and the last chapter is basically him driving the plane into 
the whole building where all of this kind of takes place and I loved that bit of it. Its running lights blinked on and off and for just a moment, an insane moment of total surprise and horror and disbelief, he could see Richard staring out at him, his face smeared with blood, his black eyes burning like the eyes of a demon. Richards was grinning and giving him the finger. Jesus was all Killian had time to get out. Healing over slightly, the Lockheed struck the games building dead on, three quarters of the way up. Its tanks were still better than a quarter full. Its speed was slightly over 500 miles an hour. The explosion was tremendous, lighting up the night like the wrath of God, and it rained fire 20 blocks away. So not a great book in general, but just that last bit of the book I love. This next book is also a Richard Bachman book, one of my all-time favorite Richard Bachman books, and that would be The Long Walk. I won't say it's a very surprising ending to the book because basically you know the main character in this story is going to win just from the basic premise of the book. You've got a hundred teenagers and they're set out on this long walk and if they stop at any point three times they basically just get shot dead and it's told from you know the main character of Garrity. So you basically know he's gonna win. But just the overall feeling when he actually wins, obviously there's no real feeling of triumph because all of these kids are dead. And even when he does win, there's this kind of this dark figure that he sees when he finishes. And I love the very last line of the book. And when the hand touched his shoulder again, he somehow found the strength to run. Just a very fun yet dark and very nihilistic Richard Bachman book with a terrific ending. And I might as well talk about the other Richard Bachman book that I have on the list, which would be Thinner, and talk about dark and nihilistic. Good God. This book is about a very fat, obese lawyer who runs over a old gypsy lady and the old gypsy husband puts a curse on him. Thinner. And he starts losing weight pretty rapidly, even to the point where he's getting dangerously skinny. And it's a pretty silly concept for a book, but I still love it. And the ending, he gets the curse lifted from him and somehow it gets put into this pie, which is kind of stupid, but who cares? He gets the curse put into this pie and he wants to give it to someone else so he doesn't have to worry about it. So he wants to let his wife eat it because... He kind of blames her for everything. But when he wakes up in the morning, not only is his wife eating it, his daughter is eating it as well. And then he's like, well, crap, I might as well eat it too and just die with them. So I like that ending a lot. It's very dark, very nihilistic, even for Richard Bachman. I love it. This next book is interesting because not only does the book have an ending, well, it obviously has an ending, you dumbass. The book has a great ending, but even though the movie completely changes the ending, it's still good. And I'm, of course, talking about The Shining. Now, whether you're a King fan and you like the book more or you like the movie more is a bit of contention for the King fandom. But for me, even though I enjoy the movie slightly more, I still enjoy the book ending. While the ending of the book, Jack Torrance basically has a moment of redemption where he, you know, is trying to very much fight the urge to kill Danny. While in the movie, pretty much no redemption. He just wants to straight up murder his son. <laughs> yeah, I just want to straight up murder him. <laughs> I do like how Jack in the book, even though he's very despicable with the things that he does or tries to do, he has a bit of a redemption arc where he's like, oh, you need to get out of here before I actually kill you. And also the major difference in the book versus the movie, and this is a big thing that Stephen King himself points out because he does not like the movie at all. In the book, it ends with the boiler in the hotel exploding exploding the whole hotel and it burns with a fiery passion. While in the movie, 
Basically, Jack gets lost in the hedge maze and he freezes to death. And of course, Stephen King prefers the book ending because it's more, I guess, warm hearted because the hotel burns down <laughs> while the movie is supposed to be more clinical and cold because Jack basically freezes to death. Either way, I love both the book and the movie. I'm a bit more nostalgic for the movie just because I watched it so much as a kid and I still watch it to this day. It's my second favorite movie of all time other than Pulp Fiction, but the ending to the book is great as well. Another great Stephen King ending would be The Green Mile. Definitely one of Stephen King's more sadder endings. Just, you know, John Coffey's death scene where he's being electrocuted. Just very sad because, you know, you find out that he was innocent the whole time. <sighs> and then, of course, Paul revealing that Mr. Jingles is still alive. Great ending and just an overall great story in general. And obviously, you know, Tom Hanks, one of the best uh, book to film adaptations ever. And definitely one of Stephen King's better endings. And now we go back to where it all started, his very first published book, and just one of the best endings he's ever written in general. We have Carrie. Talk about a cathartic ending. Man, there's a reason why this book is still talked about and why people keep remaking the movie, even though the 1976 film did it the best, in my opinion. Everyone can relate to being bullied at some point in their lives and just having that feeling where you want to get revenge, exact revenge on the people who have wronged you, especially during a very vulnerable point in your life when you're in high school and Carrie being dumped with the pig's blood at the prom and just her going ballistic. It's so good, both in the book and in the movie. So good. <laughs> Another classic Stephen King book with a terrific ending would of course be Firestarter. The ending where Charlie's dad's dying and he's basically just telling her you need to get away and you need to burn it all down. And then he dies and she goes ballistic. So good. Another very cathartic ending. And I know a lot of King fans have problems with his endings, but come on. It's one of the best endings he's ever written. The last story I have to talk about is one of the stories in his novella collection, Different Seasons. And it's not Shawshank Redemption, it's not Apt Pupil, and it's not The Body Stand By Me. It's actually The Breathing Method. And trust me, if you have not yet read The Breathing Method, don't watch this part of the video because it's one of my all-time favorite Stephen King endings. It's so good and it feels like it comes out of nowhere and it's so shocking and so just memorable. It's, it's just imprinted into my mind. I'll never forget it. It's about this pregnant woman who's learning about this breathing method for when she's going to give birth. And at the very end of the story, she gets into this accident on a busy street and she's ultimately decapitated and when her doctor kind of like rushes out to either like save her or to save the baby, he sees that even though she's decapitated, she's still performing the breathing method. And the way it's described is that the sound that she's emanating from her esophagus sounds like a tea kettle. And just that image alone will never leave my mind. It is burned into my memory. Oh man, not a good story to read if you're pregnant, by the way. Easily one of the best, most memorable, most unforgettable endings I've ever read of anything. 
So those are all of my favorite Stephen King endings. And I will say that this video and coming up with these picks was much easier than coming up with the worst Stephen King endings because he actually does quite have a few son of a bitch. And I will say that this list was definitely easier to come up with than the worst Stephen King endings because like I've said, even though he has a reputation for having terrible endings, which does have some merit, more often than not, he actually has good endings or great endings. So in saying that, what are some of your favorite Stephen King endings? Did I include any on here or were there any noticeable absences? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day. Yeah, I just want to straight up murder him. <laughs>